In the lead-up to World War II, battleships stood as towering symbols of naval supremacy. Colossal giants of steel, bristling with firepower and built to rule the seas, these floating fortresses were not just warships, they were statements of a nation's military might. However, World War II marked a turning point. Even as battleships reached their largest and most powerful forms, they were already on the verge of becoming obsolete. With aircraft carriers rising to dominate naval warfare, battleships embarked on their final missions, still playing formidable roles, but facing the undeniable reality that their reign over the seas was ending. Today, we're exploring the top 10 largest battleship classes of World War II, ranked by their full load displacement. This metric, which measures the total weight of a ship when fully equipped with fuel, ammunition, crew, and supplies, gives us an accurate sense of these giants' true scale. Which nations built the largest battleships? How did these massive vessels perform on the high seas as the tide of war shifted? Let's dive in and uncover the impact of these awe-inspiring heavyweights as they played their final roles on the stage of naval warfare. Starting off our list is the American South Dakota class, a powerful testament of the U.S. Navy's response to the growing threats of the Axis powers. Displacing up to 45,233 tons, these battleships were built for one purpose, to dominate the high seas and protect Allied forces from escalating naval aggression. The lead ship, USS South Dakota, was commissioned in 1942, quickly establishing itself as a key player in the Pacific theater. Armed with nine 16-inch guns and reinforced by a heavy armor belt, the South Dakota class was a force to be reckoned with. One of their defining moments came at the Battle of the Santa Cruz Islands. Despite taking multiple direct hits, the ship showcased incredible resilience, surviving enemy fire and continuing to fight on. In 1945, she participated in the battles of Iwo Jima and Okinawa and bombarded Japan three times. At number nine on our list is the Italian Littorio class, a formidable series of battleships that played a key role in the Mediterranean. With a full load, they could reach a displacement of 45,236 tons. Built between 1934 and 1942, they were the most modern battleships used by Italy during the war. The primary battery consisted of nine 15-inch guns in three triple turrets, which contributed to a displacement that violated established pre-war naval treaties. During the early stages of World War II, they participated in several missions to disrupt British Convoys. Despite their efforts, however, they struggled to achieve significant successes. One of the distinctive features of the Littorio class was its unique torpedo protection system, designed to safeguard the hull. However, this system didn't perform as well as hoped, with the ships suffering repeated torpedo hits throughout their service. In contrast, their armor and internal compartmentalization were much more effective, ensuring these battleships could withstand considerable damage. Despite underperformance, these ships embodied Italian naval design and innovation, though their true potential was never fully realized due to the lack of sufficient air support and the presence of more powerful adversaries. Sailing in at number eight are the USS North Carolina and USS Washington, the only two ships of the North Carolina class. Built to meet the rising naval threats in the Pacific, these battleships were fast, heavily armed, and versatile in their operations, reaching a displacement of up to 45,519 tons. Both ships served extensively in the Pacific theater, escorting fast carrier task forces during pivotal battles. One of the most notable moments came during the Naval Battle of Guadalcanal, where Washington engaged the Japanese fleet in a dramatic confrontation. Its radar-directed main guns were instrumental in sinking the Japanese battleship Kirishima, a significant victory for the Allied forces. Despite their successes, both battleships faced damage during the war. North Carolina was torpedoed in 1942, and Washington collided with the USS Indiana in 1944. Yet, both ships remained in service. In the early 1960s, North Carolina was sold as a museum ship and Washington was broken up for scrap. The first British ship on our list comes in at number seven, the King George V class. These battleships were born out of the necessity to counter the rising naval threat posed by Germany in the late 1930s. One of this series of ships, HMS Anson, reached a fully loaded displacement of 46,090 tons, making it one of the largest and most formidable vessels in the Royal Navy. During the interwar period, naval powers were constrained by treaty agreements that limited the size and armament of battleships. The Royal Navy went to great lengths to ensure that the King George class abided by the international agreement. Unlike some other battleship classes that prioritized sheer size, the King George class was compact yet powerful, designed for maneuverability and speed. This gave the Royal Navy a distinct advantage, especially in the unpredictable waters of the North Atlantic, where quick positioning could be as critical as firepower. 
power. The HMS Duke of York, perhaps the most famous of the class, gained international recognition during the Battle of the North Cape in December 1943. In this dramatic engagement, it played a key role in sinking the German battleship Scharnhorst despite being hit twice itself. It was also the last battle ever fought between battleships of Germany and Britain. Securing the sixth spot on our list is the formidable Japanese Nagata class. Originally a pair of pre-war super dreadnoughts launched in the 1920s, the Nagato and her sister ship Mutsu underwent several upgrades and refits to become modern battleships. They reached a displacement of 46,690 tons. They were the first battleships to incorporate oil-fired boilers, marking a departure from coal, which allowed for greater efficiency and range. However, both ships of this class did not perform well during World War II. Mutsu participated in the Battle of Midway and the Battle of the Eastern Solomons in 1942, but she did not see any significant combat. In 1943, one of her aft magazines detonated while she was at anchor, sinking the ship with the loss of 1,121 crew members. The lead ship, Nagato, had no better record. Once an important part of the Japanese Imperial Navy, the ship was converted toward the end of the war into a floating anti-aircraft platform due to a lack of fuel and was assigned to coastal defense duties. After the war, Nagato became a target in the U.S. atomic bomb tests during Operation Crossroads in mid-1946. The ship survived the first test with relatively minor damage but was ultimately sunk during the second test, a fitting end to a battleship that had once been at the forefront of naval power. Claiming the fifth spot is the only French contribution to our top 10, the Richelieu class. With a full load displacement of 47,728 tons, this class of battleships represented an ambitious modernization effort by the French fleet in response to increasing naval competition in the late 1930s. Prompted by the Italian Littorio class battleships commissioned in 1934, the lead ship, Richelieu, was ordered alongside a sister ship, Jean Bart, the following year. Neither of the ships was fully operational by the outbreak of World War II. Richelieu was completed just before the French defeat in the Battle of France, while Jean Bart was hastily prepared to be seaworthy during the campaign. In mid-1940, Richelieu was attacked twice and damaged by British forces, attempting to coerce the crew to defect to free France, while Jean Bart was badly damaged by American forces during Operation Torch in November 1942. After the French African colonies shifted to free French control, Richelieu was taken to the United States to be repaired and modernized. A standout feature of the Richelieu class was its advanced protection system. The inner belt was reinforced with thick, high-strength steel, engineered to withstand not only shell fire, but also torpedo impacts, making it one of the most resilient battleship classes of its time. The class also introduced an innovative propulsion system that combined heavy fuel oil with steam turbines, increasing operational range and efficiency. Securing fourth place is the British HMS Vanguard, the only ship of its class and the final battleship constructed for the Royal Navy, displacing 52,250 tons at full load. Designed near the end of World War II, Vanguard arrived too late to see combat, instead serving as a bridge between the era of traditional battleships and the dominance of aircraft carriers. One of Vanguard's unique features was its use of components from older ships, particularly its main guns. Fitted with 15-inch guns salvaged from two World War I-era battlecruisers, HMS Courageous and Glorious, the ship's main armament was both cost-effective and powerful. Although these guns were older, they had been thoroughly modernized, granting Vanguard's substantial firepower without the expense of newly manufactured artillery. This reuse of high-quality surplus equipment reflected the British Navy's practical approach to wartime budget constraints while ensuring combat capability. Powered by four Parsons steam turbines, it could reach speeds over 30 knots, a rare feat for battleships, designed to keep pace with aircraft carriers and provide a protective role against surface threats. Although it never saw battle, the Vanguard went on to serve as a royal yacht, carrying King George VI and later Queen Elizabeth Elizabeth II on diplomatic missions. Now, we're entering the top three, a realm reserved for the heaviest giants of battleship design and the ultimate floating fortresses. At number three is a ship class so intimidating that it reshaped British naval priorities almost overnight, making it the Royal Navy's most urgent mission to hunt and sink it. We're speaking, of course, about the legendary Bismarck, but it's surprisingly not the Bismarck herself that claims the third spot. While the British vanguard edged out Bismarck's displacement of 50,300 tons, it was her sister ship, the Tirpitz, that ultimately claimed the title of Germany's largest battleship, reaching a full load of 52,600 tons 
After several modifications, the Bismarck class was crafted to challenge Allied control over the seas, combining thick armor with formidable armament. Equipped with eight 15-inch guns, these battleships delivered devastating broadsides, as demonstrated during the infamous clash with HMS Hood, the pride of the Royal Navy. The swift and destructive loss of Hood sent shockwaves through Britain, underscoring the immense threat these German warships posed. Though Bismarck's own career was short-lived, pursued relentlessly by British forces after that fateful engagement, her legacy endured in tear pits. Anchored in the Norwegian fjords, this mighty battleship cast a long and menacing shadow over the Arctic convoys supplying the Soviet Union. Even without seeing much direct combat, Tirpitz's mere presence forced the Allies to divert massive resources to contain her, from continuous bombing raids to daring covert operations. In November 1944, British Lancaster bombers finally succeeded in delivering two direct hits, causing the ship to capsize. Ultimately, the destruction of both Bismarck and Tirpitz marked the end of Germany's challenge to British and American supremacy at sea, closing a dramatic and powerful chapter in the history of World War II. In the runner-up position, we have the legendary Iowa class, an American powerhouse that pushed the boundaries of battleship design in both power and speed. Built to an impressive 58,460 tons fully loaded, the Iowa class was developed as the U.S. response to Japan's battleships capable of over 33 knots. These ships could outpace any battleship of their size, making them ideal for both direct combat and high-speed escort missions for aircraft carriers. The Iowa class boasted nine massive 16-inch guns, each capable of firing 2,700-pound shells up to 20 miles. This range allowed them to engage enemy ships from a safe distance or rain destruction on shore positions, a feature the Allies put to effective use during landings in the Pacific. From Iwo Jima to Okinawa, the Iowa-class battleships were a crucial asset, providing devastating bombardments that cleared paths for advancing troops. Perhaps the most famous of them was the USS Missouri, which hosted the signing of Japan's unconditional surrender on September 2, 1945. After the war, Iowa-class battleships continued to serve in conflicts like the Korean War and even saw reactivation in the 1980s, updated with missile systems as part of President Reagan's naval expansion program. Their versatility, longevity, and symbolic power made the Iowa class a storied chapter in naval history. As we arrive at the pinnacle of naval engineering during World War II, we encounter a ship that stands alone in both scale and legend, a battleship built to be the ultimate display of naval might. Claiming the top spot is Japan's Yamato, the largest and arguably the most awe-inspiring battleship ever constructed, with an astonishing full-load displacement of 71,659 tons. Designed to crush American naval power, Yamato represented the height of the Japanese Empire's ambition. Her immense size was intended to give her an edge in an all-out clash of battleships, a confrontation that never materialized as planned. Armed with nine 18.1-inch guns, each capable of launching 3,200-pound shells over 26 miles, Yamato's artillery was unmatched. These guns were the largest ever mounted on a warship, able to rain down destruction at a range and scale unheard of at the time, making her a serious threat to any fleet within reach. Her armor was equally formidable, nearly 16 inches thick at its strongest points, designed to absorb the heaviest blows an enemy could deliver. However, Yamato's design reflected a bygone era even before she first sailed. The battleship was built to engage in traditional ship-to-ship -ship combat, yet the rise of aircraft carriers and the increasing role of aerial warfare shifted the naval balance. Yamato's massive guns, which had been crafted to sink other ships, suddenly became less relevant against waves of fast-moving aircraft. In a final fateful mission, Operation Tengo, in April 1945, Yamato was ordered on a one-way voyage to Okinawa, where she was to defend the island from American invasion forces at any cost. This operation was a desperate act by the Japanese Navy, aware that she likely wouldn't return. As expected, her journey ended in tragedy. Without air cover, Yamato faced relentless attacks from U.S. carrier-based planes. Overwhelmed by nearly 400 aircraft, she succumbed to multiple bomb and torpedo hits, capsizing in a fiery explosion that took over 3,000 of her crew with her. Her sister ship Musashi met a similar fate in 1944, sunk by an estimated 19 torpedo and 17 bomb hits from American aircraft. Today, the Yamato class endures as a symbol of a lost era of battleship dominance, a testament to Japanese ingenuity and ambition in the face of overwhelming odds, and a reminder of the shifting tides of naval warfare that marked the end of the battleship age.
These were the top 10 largest battleships of World War II. Each ship was a product of its time, built to meet the specific needs and challenges of naval warfare. The battleship era inevitably came to an end, but their legacy reminds us of the great engineering capabilities of the world's strongest nations during that time. Do you have a favorite battleship? Which one do you think had the most impact during World War II? Let us know in the comments. Thank you for watching and see you soon.